Dr. Roger Craig hears what he, he called a shrill whistle coming from across the street near the school book depository. He looked up and he saw a man in a Rambler station wagon leaning over, whistling, and then he saw Lee Harvey Oswald. He didn't know it was Lee Harvey Oswald at the time. He only found out that afterwards, and when he identified him at Will Fritz's office, saw Lee Harvey Oswald run down from the, the, the school book depository. Lee Harvey Oswald got in the front seat, and they took off, and they headed towards Oak Cliff. A Dallas Sheriff's officer, officer, Roger Craig, said Oswald was definitely the man he saw run from the Texas Book Depository building right after the assassination. He said that Oswald whistled at a man in a station wagon. The man stopped and the two drove away. Police said a few minutes later, Officer J.D. Tippett was slain by an unknown man as he was, he was trying to arrest about two miles from the scene of the assassination. As I was searching the south curb of Elm Street, I heard a shrill whistle. And I looked up, it just drew my attention. It was coming from across the street. And there was a light green Rambler station wagon driving real slow west on Elm Street. And the driver was leaning over to his right, looking up at a man running down the grass. So I immediately tried to cross the street to take these two people into custody for questioning. Just, you know, everybody else was coming to the scene. These were the only two people leaving. I mean, this was suspicious in my mind, you know, at the time. So I wanted to talk to them. But I couldn't get across the street because the city officer who was stationed at Houston and Elm had left his post and the traffic you know, was so heavy, I just couldn't get across the street to him. But I did get a good look at the man coming down the grassy knoll. And he got in the station wagon, and they drove west on Elm Street. This was a decorated Dallas deputy sheriff. He had won officer of the year two years prior. He was awarded by Sheriff Bill Decker that award. He was the youngest officer to ever win that award in the state of Texas. He told reporters what he had seen. Even on the day of the assassination, uh, there's an article printed about him witnessing Lee Harvey Oswald leave the school book depository and get picked up by a Latin man driving a Nash Rambler station wagon and head towards Oak Cliff. Okay, now Oak Cliff is where Officer J.D. Tippett was uh, found shot to death. This, uh, this flies in the face of the official narrative. And he wasn't the only one that saw this. There were several witnesses. And in my book, The Deputy Interviews, I document approximately 11 witnesses that witnessed something similar to what Roger Craig saw. Somebody that looked just like Lee Harvey Oswald get in a station wagon with another man and flee the scene. Later on, um, he heard that there was a suspect that was arrested at the Dallas Theater and they were holding him over at Captain Fritz's office. He was uh, Cap Captain Will Fritz was in charge of homicide for the Dallas Police Department. And so he called down there and he said, listen, I, have, I think I saw that guy leaving the school book depository. His, the ID matches who I saw. And Will Fritz said, why don't you come on down and take a look at it? So I went out and got in my unmarked car and drove to the uh, city hall went directly to Captain Fritz's office. And uh, we went into Captain Fritz's inner office. And uh, the man was sitting in a chair behind a desk. And there was another gentleman. I assumed he was one of Fritz's people because he had the white cowboy hat on, which was the trademark at that time of the Dallas uh, Homicide Bureau. And Fritz turned to me and said, is this the man you saw? And I said, yes. And it was. It was. So he turned to the suspect and he said, this man saw you leave. At which time the suspect became a little excited. And he said, I told you people I did. And Fritz said, now take it easy, son, talking to the suspect. He said, we're just trying to find out what happened here. He said, what about the car? I didn't say station wagon. He said, what about the car? 
at which time the suspect leaned forward and put both hands up on the desk and said, that station wagon belongs to Mrs. Payne. Don't try to drag her into this. Then he leaned back and very disgustedly said, everybody will know who I am now. Now, this was not a brag. I know it's been blown up to be a brag in the Warren Commission. But this was not a brag. This was a man that, that uh, he was catch in a building at night, you know, after it's locked. Mm -hmm. This is like uh, uh, somebody was trying to steal something mm -hmm. and you catch him at it. it was, uh, he was embarrassed about it. Or disgusted that he had, had mm -hmm. uh, uh, blown his cover or, or, or been caught or, or something, you know, it, uh, it wasn't a brag. So Roger Craig later on that afternoon went down to Will Fritz's office and he walked in and he saw Lee Harvey Oswald sitting behind a desk and he was being interrogated. And Will, and Will Fritz turned to Roger Craig, he said, is this the man you saw? And he said, yeah, that's the man. And during the phone conversation, um, Roger Craig had told Will Fritz that he saw this guy leaving in a station wagon. According to Roger Craig, he said that Will Fritz turned to Lee Harvey Oswald and said, this man saw you leave in a car. He saw you leave in a car with another man. Lee Harvey Oswald at that point got very upset and said, that station wagon belongs to Mrs. Payne leave her out of it. Marina Oswald, Lee Harvey Oswald's wife, was, was staying with Ruth Payne. And she was going to teach Marina English, and Marina, she was, she was going to help uh, Ruth Payne to speak Russian more fluently. And so that was the, that was the story. But see, Ruth Payne, uh, her family, she has uh, family ties to the CIA. When investigators went to her house after they found out that Lee Harvey Oswald's wife was living there, they confiscated filing cabinets, okay? Not big filing cabinets, but like little lock boxes, okay? And according to Buddy Walther's police report, and I published this in my book in the deputy interviews, he talks about all this anti-Castro names and addresses and had all kinds of information about uh, these anti-Castro groups. And so it was very suspicious, especially with Lee Harvey Oswald being connected to these, uh, these groups. And I personally believe, just like Lee Harvey Oswald said, he was a patsy, he was set up. I believe that he was working for the CIA and uh, they had him planted in there. And Ruth Payne actually helped him get his job at the school book depository, placing him at the scene where they would later set him up in the sniper's nest. Uh, she contacted uh, Mr. Truly, who was the, uh, the manager of the school book depository. And he hired Lee Harvey Oswald on, uh, Ruth Payne's uh, recommendation. What about, can you just give me a little bit of insight on Roger Craig? His testimony has been like basic all the way through, just straightforward, never wavering from really anything. And it gets into this point where you have Fritz that says, Roger Craig was never in that interrogation room. Now you gave me a little bit of insight on that as well too, but we know that's not true because Roger Craig was there. And so you're now having, was Fritz a liar? Point yeah, now absolutely. Ago. So then why is Roger Craig's testimony or none of this? Why is he why is he seen as people will discredit him? And I've talked to people that admire him. And I think, honestly, he seems like the, the most probably best. I wouldn't say best witness, but best kind of answer. I, and I guess you and, just answered your own question yeah. because he was the best witness. I said he was it. the most credible. He uh, had won the you know officer of the year just a couple of years prior for Will Fritz to say he's never heard of a Roger Craig. He's full of bleep okay the guy was full of bleep he was definitely there um he reported it. it it's in the dallas newspapers on november 22nd 1963 that roger craig went to will fritz's office and identified lee harvey oswald in the office so these people that are trying to discredit roger craig oh so he uh he planned all this out to, to create this big lie on the day of the assassination that he went over to will fritz's office and identified lee harvey oswald I mean, that's absurd. It's absolutely absurd. 